giving you the 411 on something. Welcome everyone to the Senior Living 411 series. Tonight's topic is the 411 on safe winter walking. As you all know, November is Fall Prevention Month. And for Fall Prevention Month, every day for the month of November, that's right, 30 days straight, I will be bringing you the 411 on something related to seniors. Now, before I jump into this, in case you haven't watched one of my presentations before, my name is Desiree King and I'm a senior home safety advisor here in Ontario. I want to first share my story with you. The first question that I'm often asked when I deliver seminars to groups such as this is, what do you know about aging? Or you're so young, or why do you care? And my honest response is, is that it's my passion. It's funny how when you look back in life, the steps you've taken, if you're paying attention, leads you to where you are and where you're supposed to be. Now, I'm not gonna date myself here, so promise me not to ask me my age, but when I was 14, I volunteered to work as, the, as a candy striper. Now, how many of you remember what a candy striper was? They went, worked in hospitals, they volunteered, and we wore that red and white striped outfit. Ironically enough, I was assigned to the geriatric floor. And there I delivered books to seniors and I had some wonderful, great conversations with them. I then went on to work as a dietary aide in the geriatric ward of a hospital throughout my high school years. And since then I've worked in or owned several senior related businesses. Most recently, I was a realtor for the past six years who specialized in working with the 55 plus demographic. I've taken a slew of courses in aging in place, downsizing, retirement living options, and dementia care. I've also worked as a client care coordinator for one of the leading home health care companies in North America. Now, I must admit that during my time spent as a realtor, I've always felt a pull towards the educating and serving side of the business more so than the real estate side of the business. And at the beginning of 2020, I knew that something in my life was going to change. I knew that my calling was greater than my career. Little did I know and little did anyone know that we'd be hit with a pandemic called coronavirus. So over the past seven months, coronavirus has killed roughly 9,822 Canadians. 81% of those deaths are linked to long-term care homes. Now, health officials have cited the need for rigorous visitor and resident care protocols and precautions in these facilities, but the solution is also in our hand. We, as a people, as the future elderly population of this country, have to make some decisions as well. I firmly believe that we as Canadians need to change our way of thinking and method of caring for the elderly. One possible solution is that we honor the wishes of our elderly members of society and allow them to stay in their home by doing what places like Scotland has done and pour money into home modifications and home health care as opposed to hospital funding. Over the past two months, as I sat at home listening to the numbers of, watching the numbers of deaths occur with our seniors, I realized that I wanted to do more than I was already doing. I realized that being a realtor did not align with my desire to have a greater impact on the lives of seniors. The ancient Greek physician Hippocrates once said, drastic times call for drastic measures. My drastic measure took the form of me officially resigning from real estate in May of 2020 and turning my attention to an aspect I was already doing, but I made it my one thing, which is senior home safety. While many seniors want to stay at home safely, their homes are not equipped to do so. And the numbers I'm going to show you back that up. In preparation for what I see will be a shift in the mindset of seniors, their adult children, and society on the whole, my main objective is to assist families in figuring out what is wrong in the home of themselves or their loved ones and what needs to be addressed in order to allow our seniors to be safe in their own homes. Now, why is fall prevention important? Why is there a whole month dedicated to fall prevention? I'm gonna give you four reasons today. Falls are common. Falls are the leading cause of fatal and non-fatal injuries for older adults. One in four older adult falls each year. One in four. Every 11 seconds, an older adult is treated in the emergency room for a fall. 
every 19 minutes, an older adult dies from a fall. This presentation is about 20 minutes long. In that time, someone will have died from a fall. Falls can also cause serious injuries. Falls result in injuries such as hip fractures, broken bones, and head injuries. In fact, more than 2.8 million older adults are treated in emergency departments annually because of a fall, resulting in over 800,000 hospitalizations. Falls are also costly. The average cost for a fall-related injury is over $30,000. We are fortunate to be here in Canada where we do have health care, but think about the effect on, of this in places just south of us where they don't have that. Falls with or without injury carry a heavy burden on the quality of life. And after a fall, many older adults, they develop a fear of falling and as a result, limit their activities and social engagements. Fear of falling can result in further physical decline, depression, social isolation, and feelings of helplessness. And lastly, falls impact caregivers too. Research has shown that after a care recipient's first fall, caregivers report a significant increase in caregiver burden, fear of falling, and depression. Research has also shown that the toll on the family caregiver's health appears to increase over time. If you, can prevent a fall, whether it is you as the caregiver or the person you are caring for, you can save time, stress, and money. Physical activity throughout the year is a part of healthy aging and can help prevent falls and fractures. Regular physical activity during the winter months could include walking, show snooing, or shoveling. Shoeing. Here are some general fall prevention safety tips. And I know this may seem redundant. However, I cannot begin to stress the importance of the following tips. Exercise. Regular exercise is so important. Exercise improves your strength, flexibility, and balance. Reviewing your medications. Medications should be reviewed regularly by your doctor or your pharmacist. And that's both prescription and non-prescription medication. Vision assessments. Annual eye exams and updating of your prescription as needed. Get your regular eye exam. Taking care and time to study your environment can also be very helpful. And most importantly, watch your step. Now, what can you do to stay safe in the winter? Here are some tips. Firstly, watch for hazards masked. Watch for hazards masked by snow. Vision issues are affected by snow, ice, and the shorter days. Be aware of the effects of glare. Snow makes the sun much more damaging to eyes and the skin, acting as a reflector and magnifier for UV rays that could otherwise be absorbed by the ground. When that happens, your eyes and skin are open to some nasty conditions that can have long-term effects on your vision. No, snow reflects 80% of UV rays. So if you plan to spend any time outside, go prepared with solid eye protection. If you plan to spend some time outside in snowy conditions, it's important to have your eyes protected from the sun's rays to prevent long-term damage and avoid painful burns. A good pair of sunglasses, which offer at least 95% UV protection is essential. Look out for black ice and other icy surfaces. Black ice is a thin coat of glazed ice on a surface. And it isn't black, it's actually clear, but it takes on a dark coloring from the pavement below it. Because it's so thin, it is often visible, invisible, sorry, to the human eye. 
remember also, it gets dark early, becoming more difficult to see. Winter months, it gets dark at around 5.30. So be aware of that as well. Before you start, before you start your walk, monitor the forecast and plan ahead. Dress in layers so you are prepared for changing winter weather. Stay warm by wearing a hat, scarf, and gloves. Wear bright or reflective gear, such as these examples here on the screen. Your outer clothing should ensure that you can be seen by drivers, cyclists, and other walkers. Choose warm, stable footwear. Look for well-insulated and lightweight, lightweight footwear with a non-slip tread sole. And consider assistive devices. Use a cane or walking poles, as you see them using here in this image. Use ice grippers on footwear. The top example has built-in grippers. The bottom ones are slide-on, but use grippers if necessary. During your walk, be aware of your surroundings and scan for hazards. Black ice is not visible to the eye. Watch for sidewalk cracks and uneven or unchanging surfaces. Walk on designated clear paths. Try even walking with a friend. After your walk, assess how you feel. If you are sore, switch to shorter walks and gradually increase your walking time. Enjoy a glass of water. Dehydration can make you dizzy, which increases the risk of falling. Drink six to eight glasses of water each day to stay hydrated. Here are some more helpful tips. Keep your doctor informed of your physical activity level. We all encounter situations where we pause and move carefully. Medication could increase your risk of falling. If you find yourself walking on ice, move slowly, keep your knees loose and shorten your strides. Wet leaves, rain and snow drifts can be as risky as ice. Once it gets dark outside, you may not be able to see dangers as easily and dangers such as cars may not be able to see you. So again, I'm stressing reflective clothing at night helps drivers to see you. Take extra care when stepping off the last step. The last step is a common place for a fall. Use the handrail when available for extra support. What your walk does for you. Walking improves your mental, social, and physical health, balance, posture, and muscle strength. It reduces the risk of heart disease, developing high blood pressure, diabetes. It also improves bone health and reduces the risk of fractures from falls. Enjoy your winter walking, but be safe. This resource was developed by the Southwest Ontario Fall Prevention Network and the Fall Prevention Community of Practice. Know what resources are available to you. For a list of some resources that may be helpful to you, please send me an email to Desiree at seniorliving411.com. Helping yourself, a spouse, or an aging parent to avoid falls goes a long, long way towards preserving health and independence. On Tuesday, we discussed the 411 on what to do if you fall. However, what do you do if you witness a fall? Stay calm, keep the person calm as well. Instruct him or her to lie still, check for injuries. Only try to get the person up if it can be done safely. And please do not try to lift the person up. This is the first step you should take. Join me tomorrow, Thursday, November the 12th, as we discuss five more steps on the 411 on what to do if you witness a fall. 
thank you for joining us. And remember that all discussions can be found on the Senior Living 411 Incorporated channel on YouTube or on the Senior Living 411 podcast.